Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I know I skipped my Thursday video, but here is the Saturday video. Sorry about that. That was not my intention. And then <laughs> things went all over the place this week and I just didn't have time to film. However, um, if you saw my, well, I think I went up on Tuesday. I'm doing all the wrong days this week, but at least there's two videos. Um, if you saw my Tuesday video and if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I do have my giveaway that is currently live. You get a bunch of little like horror goodies and then you get a brand new UK edition of Almakatsu's The Fervor, a new um, paperback edition of Stephen King's Doctor Sleep, and then this beautiful hardback edition of Stephen King's The Shining. So have all of those for you. That giveaway will be live through Wednesday. I will be announcing the winner on Thursday, uh, 420. So there you have it. If you are interested, just follow me on Instagram at Violet Print and it has all the info on how to enter that giveaway there. So today we're going to talk about Clawheart Mountain by David Oppegard. So I have been trying really, really hard to read as many of the Twisted Retreat books as possible, um, primarily because the editions are beautiful. They are exclusive editions. They are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love the edging. Um, and they're all, for the most part, horror novels. Um, I know that the book, I know that their inaugural book, um, a lot of people didn't like. I was one of those people. It was my only one star read of 2022. It's very hard for a book to get a one star read for me. Um, and that book did. Um, but I've been pretty impressed with the books that I've read since. Um, I did really like The Taxidermist Lover. It was very gothic and strange and it kind of felt like a fever dream, but I did enjoy it. Um, and I'm happy to say this is my favorite book that I've read from Twisted Retreat so far. Um, it was a really, really cool, engaging concept. It kept me wanting to read the book and I wanted to do a review and talk about it because I do think that Twisted Retreat is a pretty solid box. I know they're having a lot of issues with their custom printing of books right now. Everything is delayed. I don't think we're getting the March boxes until May. I don't think we're getting the April boxes until May. I don't think we're getting the May boxes until the end of May or early June. I'm really not sure. Um, so I know that there's a lot. This is the February box um, and I didn't get this until a couple weeks ago. So yeah. And it's a new book box. It's a new thing that they're doing. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. They've been very, very open with everything they have. But I do want to talk about this book primarily because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and this was the strongest book that I've read thus far from Twisted Retreat. So this is Clawheart Mountain. I'm going to read the premise for y'all. So it says, on their way to a remote cabin on Clawheart Mountain, a group of college students discovers an abandoned armored van with $15 million on board. They steal the money and it's downhill from there. And then there's a full synopsis on the back, but I'm just gonna tell you my personal synopsis. I always get like so much hate whenever I read the back of the book, if I've already read the book. And I do that sometimes because I don't wanna spoil things and I love talking about things that end up being spoilers, but, and I've accidentally spoiled several books for people on this channel before. And I do greatly apologize for that, never my intention. Um, but this book's really, really interesting. It is about a group of teenagers who go up to spend the weekend in this uh, like cabin in the woods of this kind of like rich, like, Colorado Rocky Mountains village. Um, they find an armored van on the side of the road. There's a bunch of money in it. They steal the money. Oops. Uh, people are looking for that money because it is definitely some illegal organization running everything. And then there may or may not be some kind of creature in the woods as well. Um, everything's kind of connected. It's all kind of jumbled in like a big melting pot and somehow comes together to really work. Um, Cause I feel like there's a lot of ideas in it. There's either the teens being stalked by the organization who wants their money back, the police searching for what happened to the money. And then of course this creature in the woods. Um, it kind of sounds like a lot of ideas, but it does come together and work pretty well. Um, I feel like one or two storylines could have been cut down or incorporated a little bit more into the book, but for the most part, uh, all of the connecting storylines didn't really bother me. Um, I was super on board with this book for the vast majority of it. I really, really liked it. Um, I found the characters just annoying enough to be like great 
um, like victims of a slasher, which is kind of where I thought this book was going. And similar to Christopher Golden's All Hallows, it sort of went there and then like toned it back. And I'm really over, and the Clown on Cornfield 2 did this as well, I'm really over the slasher premise and the setup of a slasher and the beginnings of a slasher that's not carried all the way through. What I mean to say when I say that is way too many people made it to the end of this book. Um, and when you do that, it kind of feels heavier because when you kill off like one or two main characters, like then you really resonate like, oh man, like those poor characters, like they kind of feel a little bit more real than if it's just like a free for all, like everybody's like an expendable character, like you get in like the Friday the 13th and um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, franchises. So this one I really thought was going in the super dislikable character direction, very a la Jason Voorhees, coming to your summer camp. Because pretty much none of the characters, except arguably our main character, was likable. I really, really didn't like uh, the group of kids she was traveling with. And then they go to a party and they meet even more characters and only one of those characters gets developed. But I was like, oh, there's so many here. Like, we could do such a cool setup. And the first half felt very much like a non-self-aware Joss Whedon's Cabin in the Woods. Like, the very beginning of that felt very just cliche, annoying teens, spoiled rich kids, in the woods, bad things are about to happen. And I was so on board for that. And then it took a totally different turn halfway through. And I didn't mind the turn that it took, because it was still really, really engaging. Um, and that's kind of when, like, the slasher aspect started. But it felt very toned down. Like, I felt like it really could have been brought up to 11 and been, like, really garish and over the top. And you still could have had the exact same kind of ending that you had. Which is an interesting twist. And it's a little nod of, like, ooh, like, the two characters you like, like, maybe you don't like them so much kind of thing, you know? Um, and I liked it. It was an interesting twist. It was a little bit predictable, but it was also, like, whatever. Um... But all in all, it was just very, very fun to read. Even the characters not being necessarily likable, it was fun to read about their stories and how they ended up where they were. Our main character, um, her main character, Nova, was so annoying. <laughs> and, like, I didn't mind reading about her, but, like, she definitely has, like, all of, like, the staples of, like, what Stephen Graham Jones in, like, My Heart is a Chainsaw's Jade would be, like, she is a final girl kind of thing but almost to like an annoying goody two-shoes aspect. And I just wanted to be like, come on girl, have like one character flaw, just, just one. Um, she just felt so fake. Whereas every other character in this novel felt so real. Like their character flaws made them such elevated and interesting characters. And again, I didn't really necessarily think most of them were likable, but they were like fun to read about. Um, but yeah, my biggest complaint with this book was kind of just like teasing the concept of it sort of being a slasher and then just kind of ending up as like a, a thriller in the end. Um, I don't want to talk too, too much about the supernatural aspect about it because I did think that was the most interesting and kind of creative moment in the novel. Um, I really, really thought it was going to go kind of in like the Wendigo direction and I think it kind of did, like, not like the traditional Wendigo that we, that comes from, like, Native American culture, but kind of the bastardized pop culture version of a Wendigo that we have now. Um, the creature reminded me a lot of that, and it was scary. It was really scary, and I loved the description of the creature. I love how it acted. I loved this almost like ethereal supernatural quality of it. I loved the weird folklore that's definitely skewed, that's behind it. It was awesome and it was so well done. And I just feel like we had this great premise, this great slasher moment, this great like chase for the money kind of thing. It all kind of came together as one and then it just ended really abruptly. Um, almost like when you read The Stand and all of a sudden it just like ends and you're like, wait, I just read 1200 pages and it's over. <laughs> it kind of felt like that. And again, I didn't hate it. I really didn't hate the end at all. Um, it just felt like it could have been more, it could have been expanded upon. I feel like there could have been a couple more chapters. I think certain characters could have had more unfortunate fates in like a more slasher style and it would have been way more elevated. That being said, this was a four star read for me. I really, really enjoyed it. This is a great like summer read. If you're gonna go camping in the summer, if you're gonna go hiking in the summer, like read 
this. This is so just kids being irresponsible in the summer and fuck around and find out. Um, really fun. The monster in this is really, really cool. So definitely recommend this if you're looking for like a good cabiny semi slasher supernatural thriller ish read. Definitely cool setting too. I was in the Rocky Mountains about two years ago and a uh, year and a half ago actually. And the Rocky Mountains are so cool and I was so happy that I had like a visual on what this place looked like because of that and I just like I had so much fun going through everything in my mind um, and just absolutely really had fun with this and I was really impressed uh, with David Oppengard's writing style. Would definitely read more from him and I'm really happy Twisted Retreat introduced us to that. So four star read, definitely check this out. Um, I think this edition might still be available on... Um, Twisted Retreats website. So if you do want just the book, I think this might still be available. Anyhow, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I try and post every Monday and Thursday and sometimes on Saturdays, usually two times a week, sometimes three if we're lucky and I'm not slammed at work. Uh, and if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.